We've got a big newsmaking guest on a big news night. Good evening. Welcome. I'm Alex Michelson. Thank you for being with us. I'm Marla Tejas. Let's, in fact, begin with that massive breaking news. Yeah, the U.S. attorney announcing that L.A. City Councilman Mark Ridley Thomas, one of the best known and longest serving figures in the history of Los Angeles politics, has been indicted on federal corruption charges. Prosecutors describe the case as a conspiracy bribery and fraud scheme involving USC, which is why the former dean of USC School of Social Work, Marilyn Louise Flynn, also indicted. We're told those charges involve a bribery scheme stemming from Ridley Thomas's time as a member of the LA County Board of Supervisors. So the allegation is this, Ridley Thomas received benefits from USC in exchange for support for contracts with the university. Specifically, the 20 count indictment says Ridley Thomas steered county money to the university in return for admitting his son Sebastian into graduate school with a full tuition scholarship and also a paid professorship. The indictment has been filed in L.A. federal court. So we have no official word from Mark Ridley Thomas yet. Uh, but this has the potential to really be a political earthquake here in Los Angeles. And there are also uh, council members who are calling for him to step down and just get out of the way at this point. One of those councilmen, Joe Buscaino, he is running for L.A. mayor, as we have reported many times here. He sent out this tweet. It reads, I am shocked, saddened, and disgusted by the federal bribery charges against Mark Ridley Thomas. These charges tarnish the reputation of the entire L.A. City Council. And because of that, Ridley Thomas should immediately start step down from his position. Here's part of a statement from USC. They're essentially saying that they self-reported this. They say when the university learned in the summer of 2018 about the $100,000 payment reference in the indictment, the university disclosed the issue to the U.S. Attorney's Office and has fully cooperated since. By the way, that dean is no longer an employee of the university. All right, uh, let's bring in now L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva. We originally wanted to talk about other things. This is such a big story, and we know you and Mark Ridley Thomas have gone back and forth publicly a whole lot since you took over as the L.A. County Sheriff. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Uh, thank you. Glad to be here in person again. Yeah, yeah it's good it's to have nice you to have in you person. person. And yes. we like the, the pink for breast cancer awareness yes. uh, as well, which looks really nice. All right, your reaction to Mark Ridley Thomas being indicted? Well, I'm not shocked. I was aware of those issues that have been going on for some while now, and we have to put trust in our, the federal investigators doing their job, acting independently. And it also, people who are complaining about the public corruption unit that the sheriff's department has now have egg on their face because they realize you have to have independent investigations. You have to have everybody accountable to the rule of law. You can't create this separate island where no rules apply to you and this is an example of that how would you classify your relationship with mark ridley thomas and your dealings with him up to this point well of the five members of the board of supervisors in the two years that our offices overlap he refused to meet with me ever and he Why? never spoke with me over the phone i have no idea but i think people who are involved in that type of uh, you know felonious activity probably do not want to meet with law enforcement well, it's no secret that the two of you were foes, and we, we want to play some sound. This is what he mm. said specifically about you just last month. So here's some sound from Mark Ridley Thomas. But this sheriff has made things much more challenging, much more difficult on practically every front. Resisting independent investigations as our county ordinances call for. All right, so he's referring to uh, the subpoena that you essentially ignored. We'll ask you about that in a second. But he says you make things more difficult in every front. Now this breaking news tonight, your reaction to hearing that? Well, when truth speaks to power, it is difficult for those who are in power. And I've been speaking the truth for over three decades now. I confronted Lee Baca and Paul Tanaka, and I did it when I was just a, a lonely sergeant, and I told him, you're wrong. This is going to lead to the downfall of the organization. I was laughed at, ridiculed, and ignored, and then retaliated against. I persevered. They're convicted um, felons. And now, fast forward to today, I'm still speaking, speaking truth to power. And just this, it's a bigger uh, stakes, a bigger arena, but the exact same principle. Everything I've spoken about the Board of Supervisors being corrupt in their activities is being manifested by the behavior. Remember, when he did this, he was a chair of the Board of Supervisors. Yeah. And his agenda is the one that I've been working hard against. So if they find it inconvenient 
That's a problem the people that are involved in corrupt activities. By the way, uh, Lee Baca was the sheriff, uh, Paul Tanaka was the undersheriff, yes. and both of them ended up being criminally convicted. Marla. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the, the subpoena. Uh, mm -hmm. That was, you were subpoenaed by the Civilian Oversight Committee to show up to basically, they're essentially accusing you of abusing power and uh, intimidating political opponents, harassing political opponents. You didn't, you ignored the subpoena. Why? Well, the subpoena is improper because one, we've provided all the information we have. We've given everything to the Oversight Commission, to the Inspector General, but we cannot forget they are not independent entities. They are creations, political creations of the same Board of Supervisors of which one now is federally indicted. So this is a political agenda. It's a proxy war they've been playing at the public's expense and at the expense of the reputation of the Sheriff's Department. It is not a wholesome activity they're engaged in. Another rule that the County Board of Supervisors has passed is a vaccine mandate mm -hmm. for county employees. Sheriff's uh, Department employees are county employees. You're saying, I'm not going to enforce that with your rank and file. Um, why is that? Why is it your job to sort of pick and choose what to enforce? Isn't it their job to make the laws, your job to enforce them? And we should point out that the sheriff is vaccinated. Yes. You're not vaccinated. Yeah, I know there's some people trying to claim somehow I'm an anti-vaxxer. Right. This is nonsense. I'm fully vaccinated. My entire family is. I support everyone on the department to get vaccinated. However, that is a medical decision that's left to each employee to do. We're providing a reasonable accommodation for those who do not be vaccinated. They have to submit to weekly testing and be clear and free, and they can go to work. But what the board is trying to do is going to cost me five, ten percent or more of my employees to just walk away. Anybody who's sitting around roughly 28 years or more on the department can leave. They're not going to suffer financially and they're just going to say, I'm done, I'm out of here. But shouldn't the public expect that the sheriff's deputy that shows up at their door is vaccinated? They should, uh, they should hope that, but they also should be wearing a mask. But at the same time, remember, in 2020, the whole thing pre-vaccination was ICU bed capacity in ventilators. Mm -hmm. Then somehow once the vaccination became uh, available, all of a sudden now we're not talking about ICUs anymore. Now it became emergency room. And then after that, now it's hospitalization. So they're moving the goalposts, but the at fact is we cannot impose a, a medical decision on each employee. They, it, they're going to have to make that decision themselves. Are you getting pushback from your deputies? What is the vaccination rate within your department? It's sitting sub, somewhere between 55 to 60 percent. Wow. We're wow. getting everybody. Much lower. Much lower than the rest of the county. Right. The county as a whole population wise is approaching about 70 percent full vaccination. However, recognize that it is so politicized, the decision. Yeah. Law enforcement and fire is in the same boat. Right. They tend to be more conservative. They're going to be more buying into the whole politicization narrative than not get vaccination. So it's going to be a disproportionate effect on first responders. I recognize that, and that's why I'm making it voluntary. However, you have to test if you don't vaccinate. And what about enforcing the county's vaccine mandate at businesses? which is, is going to increase that's, in the weeks ahead. That's going to be up to each business to enforce it. And however they want to do it, that's great. So With if no you help get a call, you. if you get a call, you're, you're not we going to... We will respond to a call if there's a business dispute, and we Got will it. obviously assist any business that is trying to enforce the mandate. But we're not going to become the vaccine police, not at all. That is okay. totally inappropriate. Plus, our limited resources that we have, we have bigger things, bigger fish to fry. And what do your deputies say that don't want to get the vaccine? They Is appreciate it... the position I'm taking. Okay. They understand that I'm balancing multiple needs here. Mm -hmm. And the board, if they really understood their workforce, they would not be pushing a mandate that they know. Just look what's happening in Southwest Airlines, LA Unified School District. They're in some major hurt right now because one thing is saying, I want a mandate. Next thing is actually following through, make it right. happen. Yeah. And what did those... Both have had problems with the fact that they don't potentially have enough employees that exactly. are vaccinated to get the job done that they need. Uh, so one of the things that you say is one of the bigger problems is homelessness, which yes. most people agree is the biggest issue facing us. There's been some question about your jurisdiction uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to homelessness and potentially going into areas that are usually patrolled by the LAPD uh, to help out. Uh, we see you in Venice. There's been some questions raised about that. Also, the, the VA, which is, uh, you know, an area typically patrolled by the LAPD. What do, what do you say uh, to critics that, that you're going into places where you, it's not your role? 
I, I bet you're going to say that. And I wanted to point out here you are in Venice, but that has been cleared out. Yes. It, it looks nice. It looks like a beach again. Yes. Yeah. And not only does it look like a beach, the businesses are open, the tourists returned, and everybody was thankful to the fact that we did um, cross that line that in the past we didn't. In the past, it was okay to defer to local law enforcement. However, my job as sheriff is responsible for the entire county of LA. If local law enforcement is handcuffed by the political overseers, and I have anarchy going on in the streets, I have people dying, businesses closing, and just sheer chaos, I will step in. And I did that in Venice. We're doing it at the VA Center right now. Yeah, and also, it happens to be LA. a strip of county land is where all the homeless tents are on San Vicente. That's right. actually county. We're going to be in Olvera Street. We're going to return to Westchester Park, which is another big problem. And this is where the city of L.A. has deliberately abandoned their responsibility to their own communities. And that is unacceptable to me. Well, Sheriff, we appreciate you coming into the building. As we said, it's nice to have you in person. Yes. And thank you for the work that you're doing to promote uh, breast cancer awareness. Yeah. Go to LSD Patch. Dot com and you can buy these patches. They're about they're ten bucks each. One hundred percent of the proceeds are going to the Pomona Valley Hospital Breast Care Center. Wonderful Excellent. charity. Excellent. Very good. All right, great to see you, Sheriff. Thank right. you. You got it.